Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. In this video we're going to cover how to install a Windows operating system. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. Do us a favor if you find this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so this is actually going to be the uh, last episode in this uh, video series, and we're going to show you how to install a Windows Server operating system. And uh, we're also going to talk about the different compatible ones. So uh, the ones that you can install are Windows 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, 2016 and 2019 LTSC. So those are your different options that you're able to install. Uh, maybe there's some updates in the future that you're able to do some other ones, but that is the uh, current uh, list right now. And uh, we'll show you step by step, and step by step instructions on exactly how to do it. Let's get going. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install uh, Windows Server 2016 on your R530. So there are going to be two different options of how we're going to do this. So the first option is to install the OS directly onto your R530. And then the second option is to install it as a virtual machine. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do both here. Firstly, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to install Windows Server 2016 on one of the drives on your R530. So what we are going to need for this is obviously you're going to need your R530 and it needs to have some type of storage on it. That could be um, an external or USB drive, or SAS or SATA drive plugged into the backplane. For our case, we're going to go ahead and use a SATA drive that we're going to directly plug into the backplane. The other thing you'll need is a Windows Server 2016 ISO file. Uh, you can go ahead and download this from Microsoft's website. Um, if you do you want to use Windows Server, um, you're going to need to pay for it. Uh, you can get a trial version, but it's very limited um, in features and you're not going to be able to do everything. But so if you want to use it for more enterprise purposes or even just personal use, um, you're going to go ahead and need to purchase that. But if you just want to play around with it, we can go ahead and just install the ISO file as is. With that ISO file, what we're going to do is we're going to move it onto a USB drive. We're going to plug it into the R530, and then through that, we can start the installation process. I do want to say that this process does not require an active internet connection to the server, but you will need an active internet connection well when going to Microsoft's website so you can install the ISO file. But for the installation itself, you do not need an active internet connection. Along with this tutorial, we will be providing the ISO file in um, the description below. So just go ahead and go in that link. You can download the ISO file and then you can go step by step along with us. Firstly, we want to go ahead and start booting up our R530. And during post, you want to press F11 so we can enter the boot manager. So in boot manager, you want to go ahead and click one shot UEFI menu. In here, it'll show where our USB device is plugged in. If you have plugged it into a separate USB slot, it may look slightly different. But if we go down to a USB 2 flash disk right here, we can go ahead and click on that. It'll automatically start the Windows Server 2016 installation. Once the installation loads, it's pretty straightforward. We'll start out with just picking our language, um, and then we can go ahead and click Install Now. And then here, um, this varies depending on the person and the application you're using your server for. Uh, but for this, we're going to go ahead and choose the desktop experience. Like I said, you may want something different, um, and I recommend researching the different options. Uh, but we're going with desktop experience. So let's agree to the license terms. And then here, we can either do a custom install or an upgrade. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a custom install because this is a fresh installation. But if you do do this, it will wipe everything that's on the drive that you're installing it on. We're going to pick the drive right here and click Next. And then now all the files are going to start getting copied to the drive. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward right here. So once that is done, our R530 is going to automatically restart. And during post, there's no need to press anything. It'll automatically boot back into the Windows installation. Uh, but at this point, we are almost done with the installation. So here it's going to ask us to enter in a password. Make sure you remember this password because this is going to be the password we're going to use to actually log into the operating system. This can be whatever you want it to be. 
And we're going to go ahead and click finish. And there we have it. If we click control alt delete, we can go ahead and type in that password that we put in earlier. And once we put this in, it'll log us into Windows Server 2016. And then you could start doing whatever you want with it, start playing around with it. Uh, we have successfully installed the operating system. Now we're going to go ahead and show you how to install Windows Server 2016 um, as a virtual machine in VMware ESXi. There's a few things that we're going to need before we get started. First of all, you want to make sure that you have VMware ESXi installed onto your system. And if you want to go back and watch our VMware ESXi installation video, that will be perfect and it'll show you how to install VMware as well as setting the IP address for VMware. And that's going to be the IP address we're going to use later. Um, you're also going to want to need a, either a laptop or a desktop. And this is what we're going to use to log in to the VMware ESXi interface with the IP address. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and actually access the VMware ESXi web interface. So we're just going to type in our IP address, um, log into the interface. And once we've logged in, we're going to navigate to storage on the left side. We're going to click on new data store, next. And then right here, we can actually name our data store. So this can be whatever you want it to be. And then we're going to click next again. And we can click next after that. And finish. And then yes. So we can click on our data store now and then go to data store browser. And in the data store browser, we're going to create a new directory. And we're going to call this uh, directory ISOs. And in this directory, this is where we're going to put our Windows Server 2016 ISO file. So we'll go ahead and click on it and click upload. And we want to navigate through our file explorer and find that ISO file. So for us, it's on the desktop. We'll go ahead and open it. And it might take a little bit of time to upload it. Uh, so we'll fast forward real quick. But once it's done uploading, we want to click create slash register VM and then click next. Right here, we can uh, put a name for our virtual machine. This can be anything you want it as well. Go to guest OS family and pick Windows. And then for the guest OS version, scroll all the way down until you find the 64-bit version of Windows Server 2016. And we can click Next again. And then click the data store that we created earlier and click Next. So this right here is going to be an overview of our entire virtual machine. Um, we can change the amount of CPU cores that this virtual machine will use, the amount of memory it will use. Uh, but what we're going to do in here is that we're going to go to CD DVD drive one and click data store ISO file. We want to go to our data store and go to that ISOs folder and then click on the ISO file. So this screen is going to be an overview of everything in our virtual machine. So I recommend just reviewing it and making sure everything uh, looks good. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click on finish. So now what we can do is go and click on the virtual machine and we can click power on and then we can go to the console. And in the console, we can go to open browser console. And it's going to bring up a, a display of our virtual machine. And through here, we can actually start our Windows installation. So it's going to be the exact same process as we showed earlier. So we're going to go ahead and just fast forward through it real quick. And if you need to, I recommend going back earlier in the video um, and just following those steps as well. But once you get to a password, you can go ahead and put in a password and then it'll give you the ability to log in. Just like earlier, we type in that password we created and boom, we are logged into Windows Server 2016. So if you found this video useful, go ahead, leave a like, smash that subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, um, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. And you guys have a great day. Thank you.